Sydney Olympic. Sydney Olympic can win, draw or lose by a goal to qualify for the next round. Marconi, well it's a bit tougher for them. They have to win 2-0 or they have to win by three clear goals if Sydney Olympic score tonight. Well joining us on the sideline is Andy Harper. Andy, it's a, a lot easier to win 2-0 so I guess defence just might be a priority tonight for Marconi. Well certainly Paul but they've got to redress that two goal deficit which they've incurred from last week's game. And uh, we can expect them to come out of the blocks very quickly and try and put Sydney Olympic under pressure early and see if they can get that early break and settle into a normal pattern of football. So the pressure will be on early, one would assume. And what about Sydney Olympic? They played superbly well last week. A lot of people saying it's the best they've seen them play for most of the season. Can they do it again? Well, Coach Branko Colina was very happy with the way his players uh, performed last week, and rightly so. And I'm very confident they can string the requisite number of games together and good performances together to really have a tilt at this championship. They had a great start to the season when putting back-to-back -back performances wasn't a problem for them. And even when they were having trouble picking up competition points as the home and away season concluded, I still think they were playing well enough. And uh, it would be no surprise if they make a real charge at the trophy from here on in, starting with a good performance tonight. Yeah, a lot of people are tipping them for the championship. Let's go back to last weekend and see how well they did perform. Pablo Cardozo got two goals, and I thought a lot of it was be purely because of hard work, Andy Harper. Certainly. The big key to this game and this goal was the top left of that screen, which was a score. Two minutes into the game, and Olympic have got a dream start to a semi-final series. That Kresimir Marisic, player of immense quality, steps up and knocks in a free kick like that, which it was unstoppable really. I don't think David Oseski had any right to stop that. A couple of chances did fall for Marconi, even though the way the game was unfolding they perhaps didn't deserve it. And a more confident Norm Tome might have at least forced a save in that situation. This goal wasn't allowed. Pablo Cardozo had judged to have been offside, but that's an indication of the sort of form that he's running into. He's getting the sniff for goal again. And as the third goal eventuated for Sydney Olympic, it was Greg Owens who forced an excellent save from Oseski, but it was Pablo on the spot indicative of the fact that he's got a taste of blood again as far as goal scoring is concerned. But the real hope for Marconi came in this action, a quick free kick from Brendan Renault and that man on the screen, John Gibson, probably their best on the night, has given Marconi the glimmer of hope coming into tonight's game. Yeah, that's what they need. Now a lot of the pundits would say that they lost it in the middle of the park. Now would you agree with that? The likes of Marisic, Halpin especially, uh, had a terrific game. Gutsoulis complimented them too very well indeed. Yeah, I think they were beaten all over the park last week. Except for the last five or ten minutes Marconi came into the game and significantly was when Andrew Packer and Elias Orgerinos, the two wide players for Sydney Olympic, were replaced. But uh, oh, generally, Sydney Olympic were far too good for Marconi last week. Too mobile, too fast, too good technically. Outplayed Marconi pretty much completely. And the scoreline flattered Marconi in the end. But it does give them huge hope for tonight. Well, Eddie Krenchevic has made seven changes to the lineup. So, yeah, well, I, I guess is it a last gasp really for him and his team he, he did have to do something didn't he he certainly did uh, Paul it is the last throw of the dice they don't perform tonight and get the result they need they're out of the competition and there's an adjustment at the back we can perhaps expect uh, a, a flat back four which might not suit Kim Pan Kuhn because he'll have to play on the right side of the fence we'll wait to see it kick off I think he's far better suited to a sweeping position but uh, Eddie Krenjevic no doubt realises they need to push on and push on early and hence the implementation of a flat four. And Eddie Krenjevic uh, might have a few problems at his end but really Branko Kalina has no problems, no changes whatsoever and that is no surprise. And a vote of confidence and a deserved one for the players who did the business last weekend and did it wonderfully. The number four there has got a different job tonight, Paul Kohler. Had a great game in the side last week, back after a spell. And he'll have a man-marking job, we can only presume, on Archie Thompson. And Paul Kohler is really going to have his hands full with that job. It's a big key to the game, actually. If Archie Thompson settles into some rhythm early, it'll be a really good sign for Marconi. Well, there's been 25 two-legged finals here in the National Soccer League history. Only five times has the team that's been behind in the first leg come back to win it in the second leg. Here's your match commentator, Mike Cockrell. Well, D-Day has arrived for the Marconi Stallions. It's the return leg of the elimination final. Seven changes made by Eddie Krenchevich for this do-or-die encounter. The most crucial, perhaps, the return of that man on your screen right there, the Socceroos striker, Archie Thompson. Marconi, of course, are at home, but they have a big job in front of them. Sydney Olympic convincing 3-1 winners in the first leg at Belmore. Sport ground just a week ago. Branko Cellino with the luxury of naming an unchanged lineup. Andy Packer recovered from a knee injury sustained late in that match. And that is the 11 players in the sky blue shirts who are being asked to perform perhaps mission impossible here tonight at Bosley Park.
Eddie Krenjevic, though, has not given up the ghost. His players, stung by the criticism of their performance last week in the first leg of this elimination semi-final, very much having their pride online. A decent crowd in to the stadium here in the west of Sydney. They're still coming through the turnstiles. Michael Turnbull, a change in goals as well for Marconi. The young Socceroo off with international commitments later in the week. Franco Cellina, the Sydney Olympic coach, a lot of speculation about his future in the game. Newcastle United have been linked to him persistently over the last month or so. He says he's not going anywhere. His chairman, Nick Polite, says he's not going anywhere. And that is good news for Olympic and their fans. This Olympic side, very much a championship challenging side. Eddie Krenchevich, one more year to go on his contract here at Bosley Park, but he knows that this is a club which sets very, very high standards. And the performance over the next 90 minutes will go a long way to determining just what sort of mood Marconi takes to next season. It's a delightful evening in Sydney. The pitch is in good condition. The man in the middle, one of the most liked referees in the business, Jerry Connolly from Melbourne in Victoria. And Marconi in their home strip of sky blue. Olympic in their change outfit of all white. That is, of course, the only change for Olympic. And Branko Dina delighted to be able to persevere with the starting 11 which did the job last week and did it so well it's going to be the away team to get proceedings underway 90 minutes will decide the destiny of both of these sides the remainder of this season and three weeks away from the grand final that is the target of course for all the teams inside the top six but for Marconi in particular that does look a long long way off Elisor Gerinos on the left-hand side for Sydney Olympic. The right-hand side occupied by Packer in the middle. Up front, two players on your screen, Greg Owens and Pablo Cardozo. But it was in the middle of the park, really, where most of the damage was done last week. Troy Halpin, George Gutsoulis and Kresimir Marisic really took the game to Marconi. And an early break on the right by Packer. Renault does well to get back and make the tackle. Dulovic playing as a left winger, Zoric strides forward, tripped all the way by helping towards the corner. Now Paul Wade, a lot of Marconi fans delighted to see Vlado Zoric back in the starting eleven. He really is their most creative player, isn't he? He has got a great left foot, great vision. He, I just wonder whether he's been out of the game a little bit too much this season to create a, a bit of a difference in the middle of the park. I hope he is not because uh, it'll be a waste of talent if he is. Well, by the looks of things, Marconi lining up at the back with Simon L and Dominic Longo as the markers. Kim is the sweep at the right-hand side. Wing-back is Costanza. The left-hand side is Brendan Reno. And uh, something of a surprise there, Andy Harper, particularly regarding Costanza on this right-hand side. It's a big surprise, Mike. It's, it's good for Marconi's lineup that Kim is in the, the free position because I think he's very effective there. But those wide positions are so key and it's it's very difficult to throw players out into them who who don't normally apply their trade on that area of the field angelo costanzo certainly fits into that category and his, he will have a very difficult job tonight simon bell all over the back of his opponent in this case pablo cardozo cameroon import back in the fight after serving a suspension as indeed is the case with archie thompson so much resting on archie thompson's shoulders this evening as Halpin is over the dead ball for Olympic. Plenty of movement in the middle. The deep man is Ante Juric. Dominic Longo didn't know too much about it, but the ball has been cleared by Marconi. Only as far as Ogerinos. So drifting to the right-hand side of this three-man Marconi attack. Brownlee in the middle. Radulovic on the left. Enthusiasm there from Costanzo earns Olympic a free kick. Equally enthusiastic Dominic Longo. Greg Owens is feeling the ascent. Marconi certainly charged up as you would expect for a team with their season on the line. There's no doubt about that. I guess they've been talking about this for seven or eight days now. They've got to come out, they've got to attack, they've got to be committed. If they're not, it's a long, long way to next October. So another free kick 
for Olympic. Again, it's going to be taken by Troy Halpin. Bailey makes his way into the area. Ante Juric is already there. Audrinos is the target. He's been given a free header. Juric wins it. Cardozo was just waiting for the ball to drop. It didn't. Bell was in first. Now with Halpin. He's possessed by Archie Thompson. He's back deep inside his own half, doing some defensive duties. Kim with the clearance. Sydney Olympic with the luxury, if you like, of a two-goal cushion going into this game. Marconi must win by two goals to nil or by two-goal margin. It's not easy for a team which has struggled to score goals all season. Seven changes made to the starting 11 by Eddie Krenchevich. And the decisive issue really is how well this experimental lineup will gel and how quickly time is not on their side. A first touch of the game for Bolton, the goalkeeper, who gets his clearance over the halfway line. One in the air by Gibson. He was up a bit too early. Costanzo under pressure from Owens. Thompson. Well, we talk about Archie Thompson's importance to this Marconi starting 11. All about his exploits in front of goal for the Socceroos in recent times, Paul Wade, but he is the first to admit the goals have dried up in a big way at club level. He's playing on the right-hand side of this Marconi attack tonight, and it's a big job in front of him, isn't it? One thing about Archie Thompson is he loves to run at players. He loves to jink and jive his way through a crowded 18-yard box. You've just got to give it to him early so he can turn and run at players. If he's receiving the ball with his back towards goal all night, he's going to have a terrible time. Just allow him the space, give it to him early so he can have a go at the opposition. Royce Brownlee at the sharp end for the Stallions. The strikers last week, Norman Tomei and Chris Trajanovsky. Well, Trajanovsky is on the bench tonight, but Norman Tomei not in the 14 or not in the lineup at all. Likewise, Jamie Fkos not involved this evening. Gregovic. Now Longo. Stanzo goes on the overlap. Thompson tries to get away from Kohler. It's not going to be easy, though. A very dogged competitor is Paul Kohler. And that ball has just crossed the sideline. It's going to be a throw to Olympic. The real trouble on the sideline here. Mike closest to me. Greg Owens clutching at his ankle. He's in real strife. He's got a nick on the inside of his ankle. I think he, he might have got caught by one of the Marconi defenders' studs, and, and he looks to be in quite a deal of pain. Eventually, well, Costanzo and uh, Greg Owens is certainly in a fair bit of bother. The back pass from Juric has fallen short. Bolton has to scamper. Radulovic has got no idea where the ball is, and Bolton, in the end, rather fortunate to be able to clean up the mistake. A rare error there by Ante Juric. You don't see that too often at all. And a good sign, an encouraging one for Marconi. Owens still down, receiving treatment in front of the grandstand. Olympic do have options on the bench. Nick Carl is involved for the first time in a number of weeks. He is on the bench. He may be the most obvious replacement. Damon Colina is there as well. He can play up front. Franco Cellina just coming across from the dugout to assess the situation with Greg Owens. As Olympic prepared to take a free kick. Almost seven minutes gone in the return leg of the elimination final. We're still waiting for the first goal. Of course, a draw is good enough for Sydney Olympic. And just on that issue, Paul Wade, some teams would be good at uh, closing closing up the shop, if you like, and playing for the draw, but not Sydney Olympic. It's not the way they can play, is it? No, there's no chance of that at all. They've got too many creative players. They like to play at the attacking end of the ground, and if... The likes of Juric and Bailey are doing too much hard work. They'll certainly let them know that the players have got to get forward and see if they can score at the other end, relieve the pressure. Strong challenge from Gibson. Taken away from him, though, by good Goodsulas. Owens is back out there for Olympic. It remains to be seen how long he will last. Longo. Good run here from Longo, the captain leading by example. Outside is Costanzo. 
Needs a good ball into the middle. There are players in there. One of them is Archie Thompson. Clint bolted off his line, making a very capable save. Good fearless. Brownlee just out muscled by Scott Bailey. It breaks for Cardozo. Longo dived in. Owens is free through the middle. Marisic. Andrinos overlaps and takes two players with him. Good movement here by Olympic, but Cardozo just straying offside. Ball played to feet. Mobility by Olympic, and that is a problem for Marconi. It was the problem last week, the speed and the mobility of this Sydney Olympic side. Well, there's really no rhyme and reason to what was happening last week as a midfielder Midfielders were running forward and then went back. There was really nobody specific to mark, and I think that's what really frustrating the Marconi midfield. They didn't know whether they were coming or going, Arthur or Martha. And uh, if they let Olympic get on top of them again, I'm sure they'll do the same thing. Some time now for Kim Pan Kyun. Possibly his last game for the National Soccer League. Marconi don't get through. but Michael Turnbull does well under the high ball. Well, Andy Harper, the good news for Eddie Krenchevich and the home fans here is that Marconi do look up for it after their rather lacklustre effort last week. Look, excellent start by them. It, it has to be said, and I think a lot of it coming from the captain, Dominic Longo. He's won a, 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 his share of possession already and launched a couple of attacks. And I think that's been the key to their bright 10 minutes. If they can keep going and crack a goal in the next 15 or 20, that will consolidate, obviously, the work they put in early and really set the cat amongst the pigeons. There's Dominic Longo. Very proud competitor. Former soccer rook. Had a spell in Belgium with Circle of Bruges. Knows about football at the highest level. And like a lot of his teammates, somewhat embarrassed by the performance last week at Belmore. Accepted the criticism and knows that the best way to answer that with the deeds, not the words. It's Packer, closed down by Renault. That's the cross early, but that was too close to the goalkeeper. Zorich. Goes long in for Brownlee. Well read by Clint Bolton. here from Olympic. The space is opened up in front of Gutsoulis. The late run into the box made by Orgerinos, but good use of the body there by Costanzo, but a danger sign really for Marconi. Great. opened up on that left-hand side by Olympic. Brownlee has been caught by the flag of the assistant referee. and uh, Angelo Costanza just trying to make sure they get things right next time. The game has started at a frenetic pace. Ideal playing conditions. And you would imagine the players will be full of energy. Kim shoots towards Archie Thompson, the interception came from Scott Bailey. Kohler. Strong play from Kohler, but look at the commitment from Gibson. Now space for Thompson, he's got some room for the first time. Brownlee goes through the middle, Archie Thompson fancies himself. Interception from Packer, Brownlee with a snapshot just over the crossbar. Well, a much more encouraging attack that from the Italians and it began with Archie Thompson. But so basically because they had the bodies forward, something that they couldn't do last week. Playing three up front, Eddie Krenchevich has now got the bodies forward. Whether they can actually do something with it or not is uh, another 
problem that we're going to have to sort out. Long go first to the ball. Juric with a clearing header. Well, down well, Gerinos. Cardozo has his pass intercepted by Costanzo, who is now starting to get more involved in an attacking sense. Where's Brownlee? Gets past two tackles, still going. Brownlee, well, he's just throwing himself with the ball. Eventually, it was a hasty clearance from Ante Juric, but Andy Harper, this Marconi formation is causing a few problems for Sydney Olympic. There's three-man attack, and you can see Troy Helfen often having to drop deep to pick up Tasha Radula. It's not the sort of role we're used to seeing him play. But the real danger for, for Olympic at the moment, Mike, is that the edge to the game is with Marconi. They're the first to the ball. They're getting their foot in tackles. They're dispossessing the Olympic players when last week they weren't within a bull's roar of doing that and, and they're really causing their share of problems early and I think that's why. So helping at the moment as you can see virtually man marking Sasha Radulovic so Franco Cellina never afraid to make an adjustment as the ball breaks nicely for Renault. Brownlee tries to get there. Bolton gets there first, and the busier of the two goalkeepers at the moment. This is a very good start from the home side, but they need a goal. Owens. Just again on that helping uh, scenario, Paul White. George Gutsoulis is out there. Sydney Olympic. Just wondering the wisdom of having uh, Troy Halpin, who's at the moment got plenty of space. Oh, the action packer comes inside to lay it off for Owens. I just wonder about the logic of having a creative player like Helpin back there picking up a, a man rather than someone like perhaps George Goodsoulis. Well, Maybe that, the change has been made as we speak. Yeah, well, after that last raid, I'm sure that Troy Helpin was having a word with a number of players in midfield that he just can't maintain this sort of defensive work. Well, it's not his go, is it? The, the well, Olympic no. lose a lot. He hasn't got the engine. There. Exactly. He hasn't got the engines to do that for 90 minutes, that's for sure. Owens goes to ground. Simon Bell with the challenge. Owens getting in front, clipped on the ankles by his event. There's the foul count. It is a indication, if you like, of Marconi's aggressive start to the game. Orginos taken out by Costanzo and the referee allows play to continue. Well, Jerry Connolly is well liked by the players, well regarded because he lets the play go, but sometimes Paul Wade. <laughs> there's a few question marks. Yeah, there's a few question marks. You're going to get that, aren't you? I mean, if you go to the other end of the scale, we, you touch somebody and there's a free kick and we get frustrated that way. I'm sure most people would like to see the physical side of the battle. Let's have a look at this. Yes, it was a free kick. He got nowhere near the ball. I think this situation, sorry, Mike, I think this situation at, at an early stage as the game is really requires cool heads from Sydney Olympic. They don't want to get engaged in a physical battle with Marconi. They want to control the flow of mission and dominate the play, and they really need a couple of cool heads out there just to slow the proceedings right down. Zorich and Halpin challenging for the same ball and it was a nudge from Zorich which earns help in the free kick the right decision on this occasion from the referee Bailey and Urich once again make their way forward it's been taken quickly by Halpin and Owens may have seen it late because I think it was Scott Bailey who jumped first in front of him. Bailey contact again. Owens, crucial tackle from Costanzo. Rodriguez goes down. Gibson, another full-blooded tackle. Well, last week's game at Belmore was roundly criticised perhaps for its lack of passion. Tonight, a completely different story. Lack of passion on Marconi's part, but you can't fault him in the first... 20 minutes or so in this game and that was a perfect example of Angelo's Costanzo's tackle John Gibson was in there backing him up and they are generally two midfielders so a free kick to Marconi for this altercation between Orgerinos and Costanzo Longo, well he's 
it back to Olympic. Orgerinos. Returns the favour. Now with Gibson. Looks up. Her feet. Radulovic. Now Thompson. And look at the use of the body there from Archie Thompson. Into the ground. There's going to be a lot of contact. That's the way the referee saw it. Now helping. Being pressured deep inside their own half. And forced into error. Zorich. Brownlee once again. Straying into an offside position. Well, credit to the Marconi players and indeed the coach Eddie Krenchevich. He adopted a very, very attacking formation. And that is at the moment unsettled Sydney Olympic. Terrific to see, isn't it? Squeezing the likes of Bailey and Urich on the edge of their own 18-yard box. That makes a difference to last week. <laughs> Bell gets the tackle in. There he is again. Simon Bell. He has wasted the pass. Haka will be happy with that one cross the line. Chance for Olympic to take a bit of a breather if they can find one. 19 minutes gone, no goals in the return leg of the elimination semi-final the winners of two legs of this particular contest at home next weekend against the Melbourne Knights who somewhat surprisingly eliminated the Perth Glory at Subiaco Oval last night details of that particular game to be finalised by Soccer Australia after the final whistle tonight Good news for either Olympic or Marconi is that they will have home advantage against the Knights next weekend. Good Sulis. He's going to ground all over the place. The decision this time favours Marconi. Pablo Cardozo, two goals in the first leg last week. 13 goals in his last 14 games for Sydney Olympic really is back to his best at the right time as far as Sydney Olympic are concerned. Gibson, not the stands out. Long go. He's given it away, Marisic. Haven't seen too much of Marisic as yet. Packer. A good tackle from Gibson. Renault now tries to feed Archie Thompson with the early ball, well watched though by Kohler, now some room for Gutsoulis. And he took off the pass, really George Gutsoulis, picked out by Zorich. Can't get past Packer, now Reno. Now brought down by his opponent, the free kick to Marconi. Andy Harper speaking to Brendan Reno during the week. Very keen to hit the byline tonight. He accepts that he didn't get the opportunity last week. He wants to get to the byline. And I think regardless of what instructions are coming from the bench, he's going to get there one the other. Certainly. Andrew Packer got the better of, of Brendan last week. He certainly kept Brendan pinned down in Mark Payne's own defensive area. But a different story so far tonight. Reno with a free kick. Low and flat headed away by Orinos. Now with Bell. Those, as we saw a week ago, prepared to do some of the dirty work for his team. Longo with the throw. That's a long throw into the edge of the box where Royce Brownlee and both Gulovic are waiting for Marconi. Gulovic. It's some sort of contact, but the clearance from Urich gives Marconi another throw. Then it goes towards the edge of the box from Longo. Marisic may get the chance to bring it down. Gibson was tugging at his shirt. So a relieving free kick here for Sydney Olympic. Which 
23 minutes in, Paul Wade. There's no doubt that Marconi has been the better of the two sides up until this point, but crucially, no goals to show for it, and you just wonder now whether Olympic might have weathered the storm. Well, I think that's what it was, and I think that's what Eddie Krenchevich intended it to be. Let's go out there in the first 20 minutes, throw three men up front, let's get the ball forward, and uh, now that that 20 minutes has passed, it seems like Radulovic has dropped back into a central midfield role and uh, is picking up help in there. Cardozo. The packer, the idea was a good one from Pablo Cardozo, but it was Kim Pan Kuhn who made the interception. Now with Brownley, I should say Thompson, who has swapped sides. Cardozo again trying to pick out Packer, and again it's the same result with the ball ending up at the feet of Kim Pan Kuhn. Credit to Olympic. Marconi have certainly put them under the microscope, but they have held firm. And that is giving them a great foundation to go on with it. Yeah, they're, they're gradually filing that edge off Marconi's opening onslaught, but Marconi really need to keep the momentum going. That they have uh, well, they had Olympic on the ropes to some degree, and they really need to push this, this advantage through. And the, the player who was just almost in possession there on the screen now, Royce Brownley, he's been a key early, he hasn't quite secured the possession that his team needed him to at the, at the important end of the field. And in the next five minutes, they really need to keep Marconi under the hammer as best they can and get Brownley into the game to secure some possession. He stands over. Thompson, a big ask against Paul Kohler. In an offside position anyway on that occasion. So Paul Kohler following Archie Thompson from right to left. I'm sure he gets no time whatsoever on the ball. Well, national coach Frank Farina due to announce his 23-man squad for the Confederations Cup tomorrow. See whether Archie Thompson makes the cut. I'm sure he's aware that he would be helped by a good performance tonight. <laughs> Bailey with the header. And I brings it down with his chest. Kim. Look at that for quality delivery from Kim Pan Kuhn. Costanzo. Torinos clears. Well, Angelo Costanzo, who prefers to play as a sweeper and has played a lot of the season as central midfielder, is making a very good fist of this unaccustomed role on the right hand side for Marconi. Zorich. Gibson. Look the pass a fraction earlier, John Gibson. Now with Kim. Gibson. And Gibson went out of room. The shot from Brownlee takes a deflection. That is going to be a corner for Marconi. Come on. Oh. Brownlee struggling to get a clean shot on goal. Ethan Bolton giving some words of encouragement to his defenders. First corner of the game, 27 minutes into the match. And it comes from Gibson. And the header there from Thompson, who was up well in front of Kohler. The header though, clearing the crossbar from Archie Thompson. He really did do well to get high above a couple of defenders from Sydney Olympic. Full-blooded tackle from Ante Juric. 
Bruce did the job. Morris Brownlee, though, getting a metre or so on Bailey for one of the few times in the game. Again, a long throw from Dominic Longo. Nikulovic is there, Zorich as well. Ball coming off good a corner for Marconi, their second in quick succession. Marconi desperately need to score the first goal here tonight. Renault goes deep. Bolton under pressure from Bell. That's a good clean take and the throw releases Urich. Colton. From the play in. Presently Amaris hits, but Costanzo was back in cover. to Sydney Olympic. On the line is Troy Halpin, but Simon Bell is in smartly for Marconi. Well, Troy Halpin and Kresme Morris which really ran the show a week ago. And tonight it is a different story. They're being forced to do a lot more work off the ball. the head up it's going to be a goal kick just on the part of Marconi and I'll ask you for your thoughts Andy uh, that ball from Pankun Kim from the center of defense over the top to Angelo Costanzo it's that sort of quality that if you even if you play them once every two or three times psychologically it gets your opposition in a well almost a negative frame of mind that they have to get back because if they don't Players like Angelo can push forward because there is quality there. It's a point well made, uh, Paul, and it's all about in those wide areas in particular, gaining the ascendancy on your opponent. Last week, Andrew Tacker had it all over Brennan Renault, and it was a real factor in the game from Olympics viewpoint. But the, top, the tides turned exactly the opposite direction now. It's, it's Marconi who have that advantage, particularly down to Stanzo's side. And he, as Mike said, he's made a really good fist of playing in a position which is difficult and with which he probably feels a little uncomfortable. That's a good example of it there. Costanzo putting pressure on Cardozo. The ball was drifted across the line. As Cardozo played it in towards Marisic. It's going to be a throw for Marconi. They're still putting the pressure on the Stallions, but so far without reward. there and accepting the blame all well, the barracking of the Olympic fans is not going to worry Dominic Longo one little bit is it uh, no it's probably likely that. to inspire him yep. he continues to go forward he's right up on the right wing at the moment so he's obviously received instructions they've been working on it during the week Eddie Krenchevic Pushing players forward that are not expected to be there and therefore catching Sydney Olympic out. Rodrinos. Costanzo. In first against Cardozo. Yeah, the tug of the shorts there. Well, by his high standards, Angelo Costanzo had a rather disappointing game last week. Tonight, like the rest of these Marconi players, he has stepped up in a big way. Kim. In towards Thompson, one in the air by Gutsoulis. Packer couldn't keep it in. gets the free kick maybe a little lucky 
but it's an opportunity for Marconi nonetheless. Reno whips it in towards the edge of the six yard box. Radula, which was trying to get the contact, a spectacular appearance from Maris, which only his father was Costanzo. Well, what a tackle that was from Simon Bell. Olympic were away, they might yet be helping. Owens, it's two against three. Cardoz brings it down. Kim is across and does the job. Corner to Sydney Olympic. They're taking their time. Helping eventually across Michael Turnbull in the defence position. Usual culprits are in there. Bailey and Urich. Orgerinos as well. Very good in the air. Helping goes deep. One by Bailey. First home by Pablo Cardozo. And that may be the nail in the coffin for Marconi. Two goals last week in the first leg. Pablo Cardozo again, the man in the right place at the right time. And that is a dagger blow for Marconi. Olympic take the lead 10 minutes before half time. And Marconi who really have made a fist of it. Now with a huge mountain to climb. There are so many bodies bouncing around in that 18 yard box. All you need is Half a step, and that's what it took in the end to get that ball back into the six-yard box. And as he's done for most of his career, he's the man who's on the spot, always there, ready to tap it into the back of the net. So Olympic now leading Marconi, one goal to nil, but crucially 4-1 now on aggregate. And Andy Harper, that is a huge psychological blow for Marconi. Well, it's a crucial turn in the game in this cup in this uh, semi-final tie actually and Marconi have dominated without threatening in truth and really they've got it all to do now a couple of heads are dropping and they know that they've had a good start to the game but they haven't capitalized and Sydney Olympic weathered the storm as they needed to and have come up with a real sucker punch and Marconi really with a huge mountain to climb. Yellow card there for Simon Bell first of the game from Jerry Connolly he's only just returned from suspension the Camerooning Defender, Simon Bell. And the Sydney Olympic fans now finding their voice. They feel they're on their way to the minor semi-final next week against the Melbourne Knights. Even though there is still plenty of football to be played here tonight at Bosley Park. Rodgerinos, was he caught by Costanzo? Helping. Marisic. It won't count. The flag is up. And Kresimir Marisic has got plenty to say. That is an interesting decision from the assistant referee. Difficult to tell from where we're sitting, but a goal disallowed for Olympic. Look at the quality of that pass from Troy Helpen. Morris, it's just off screen there. The player judged to be offside. Oh, Angelo Costanzo booked as well by Jerry Connolly. Another player who's only just returned from maybe a few signs of frustration now from these Marconi players Lovic Radulovic play on says the referee Marisic Packer Reno gets back and makes a clean tackle Kim back in the corner retrieves the ball for Marconi but So demoralising really for Marconi, the scoreline. They have played maybe 100% better than they did last week and they've had the better of this game, no goal to show for it. 
and now it looks like all slipping from their grasp. Well, I didn't give them a chance at the start of this game because of the way they played last week. In the first 20 minutes, I uh, felt a little bit better, and as the, the half grew older, I thought at least they're having a go, and while you're having a go, there's always a chance. But to uh, cop a killer goal like that, that will hurt a lot of players, because they know the equation as well. They've been sitting at home when they're not training and working out what they need to do. Well, what Marconi needs to do now, at the very least, is four throws. Down goes Marisic. Free kick to the Olympic. Help him. Sora Gerinos. But for once, the delivery from Troy Helton not up to scratch. Just over five minutes remaining in the first half, and the heat is certainly rising as Olympic make a change. And Greg Owens, who was clipped on the ankle early in the match, seemed to be in a bit of trouble ever since, is replaced by Peter Zorbas, who today celebrates his 22nd birthday. So uh, Peter Zorbis on for Sydney Olympic and by the looks of things he's gone up front. At least for the moment. Brownlee and Bailey continuing their debate. And Jerry Connolly has his hands full at the moment. He's trying to calm things down. Scotty Bailey protesting his innocence, but the camera pro probably tells a different story. Costanzo has the free kick. Looking for Renault. It's almost with his first touch. Zorich. Radulovic couldn't get it under control. It's manhandled by Cardozo. It's a free kick. Possibly within scoring range for Marconi. Some 20 metres out from goal. Perhaps Brendan Renault will fancy his chances from this distance. He's probably got nothing to lose. With Bolton on his line. Decides against setting a wall. He wants to have a clear sight at the ball. Renault drives it in, but it was always rising from Brendan Renault and it would have needed a fantastic shot from there to beat Clint Bolton. Renault going a power option. Urich. <laughs> Gibson and Gutsoulas go for the same ball and George Gutsoula never won to shirk a challenge. Very happy indeed to see the throw go his way. Gibson. Simon Bell, the header, as far as Packer, now Cardozo. Zorbis goes on a run and gets there, but slips and recovers well enough. Pass long. Zorbis shooting it in towards Packer. The clearance is only half-hearted for Marconi, but in the end, Kim Pan Kuhn comes away with the ball. Zorich. It's Costanzo. Thompson. Rodriguez. Needed to be first to the ball. Kick 
Gibson. Through for the header. Stanto wins the tussle with Marisic. Now Gibson once again. Goes to feet this time. Brownlee had to stretch. Radulovic. Gonna get a metre or so on good Sulis. Marisic. Marisic. Rides it across towards Cardoza who slipped at the critical moment. The Olympic have readjusted. Presently Maris is now pushing further forward in the absence of Greg Owens. Here he is once again. Good Zorbis. Zorbis is to the left. Perhaps aware of the clock. Olympic at the moment happy to retain possession to try and make sure they don't concede before the break. Cardozo the goal scorer. Oh, Mike, I'm having a sneaky look at the stats here, and Sydney Olympic have had one shot on target and scored well. Good Solis. And Turnbull was scrambling there. There was an awkward bounce in front of him. Make that two. Yeah. Oh, it was a shot, but it wasn't on target. But it just shows you they are dominating the play at times, Sydney Olympic, but I just wonder whether they're, they're totally happy in that front third. Actually making Aseski work hard for a living. Here's Bell. Brendan Reno somehow squeezes between two opponents. Now with Gibson. Radulovic. I was aiming it towards Brownlee. Gonzalez with the clearance. Now with Costanzo. We're into stoppage time at the end of the half. Krenchevich must know what a big job it is now in front of his team. It was a big job before the kickoff. It's an even bigger one now. Yeah. Stallions need a miracle to get out of job. Franco Chilena, you would imagine. Pretty relaxed frame of mind. It's Olympic now leading. By four goals to one on aggregate. Longo wins the header. There is the half time whistle from Jerry Connolly. So, Sydney Olympic good enough to weather the early ball from Marconi. The home side came out with all guns blazing as they had to. A solid opening half an hour from Marconi, but they had nothing to show for it. At the other end, Pablo Cardozo again was their nemesis. The corner came in from the left-hand side, one in the initially by Bailey. Cardozo given too much room, a simple header from close range. And it's Sydney Olympic at half time in the return leg of the elimination final, leading Marconi Stallions, one goal to nil. AFL 2001 Premiership season. With every game live or replayed on C7 Sports. Tonight at 9, Collingwood take on the Kangaroos. Beautiful man. Sav Rocker up against his brother and his old club. He's got it. Then right after 11.30, the Sydney Brisbane showdown. And he's kicked it out. The CUB AFL 2001 season on C7 Sport. See anything? Are you sure they're there? They're everywhere. How often do you see them? All the time. Bruce Willis, Tony Collette, and Haley Joel Osment. You believe me, right? The Sixth Sense, coming soon to Movie One. Alpha. Greek Australian television brings you current affairs with discussions on local and world events. Alpha brings you shows where real life unfolds before your eyes. There's the very best in Greek drama series. 
Alpha takes you to the movies. Yeah, get in with it. Enjoy your favorite stars. There's extensive news coverage, bringing you the news just as it happens. Connect now to Alpha. It's the world you want to see. Go Harvey Norman now for this amazing PC offer. A brand new IBM computer for just $14.99. That's right, a brand new IBM computer with 64 megabyte RAM, 15 inch monitor, Windows 98 software, and 56K modem so you can surf the net. All for $14.99. Even double your RAM to 128 megabyte total for an extra $49. A brand new IBM PC for under $1,500. Where else but your computer specialist, Harvey Norman. Go Harvey Norman, go! Woohoo! Yes! Good boy, right? Ice, mate. Cheers, Al. Fine, the beer. Foster's Light Ice for extreme refreshment. The European PGA Tour. Beautifully struck. Monday at 5:30 on C7 Sports. Oh, what a marvelous shot! It's hit oh, out, yes. It's a beauty. International golf's young guns and established champions. It looks good. Battling it out in the Benson Edges International Open. Beautiful finish. He's happy too. I love it. <laughs> Did you see that? The European PGA Tour, Monday at 5.30 on C7 Sport. Welcome back to Marconi Stadium. Very disappointed fans on one side, ecstatic fans on the other, as Andy Halper joins us from the sideline. Andy, uh, well, that's like putting a, a pin in a balloon, really, for Marconi, anyway. Certainly, a lot of a lot of puff and a lot of blowing, but not a lot of end result. Uh, certainly, the, the, the end that was required was certainly there for all to see in the first 20 minutes, but they just lack that little bit of quality, I think, in truth, to really nail home their advantage. Clint Bolton never really troubled, given all the territorial dominance, and certainly the, the physical imposition that Marconi made on that st the start of that game never really accounted for much and uh, Sydney Olympic then bounced up and scored the goal off that corner which has, has really made the job very difficult for Marconi. Number of shots on goal were four to one. Uh, Sydney Olympic at one stage had one shot on goal and scored that goal. Um, that's deadly finishing but uh, I think Branko Kalina would obviously like a little bit more. I don't think he'd be overly happy with his side's performance, very happy with the scoreline but they didn't, uh, they, they didn't rise to the physical requirements as he might have liked them to have done so. Uh, and, it, and it resulted in Marconi having the ascendancy early in the game, and those stats bear that out. Certainly on bats in the first half, Marconi have had the territory, and they've been the most aggressive physically, and certainly trying to, to uh, get the game back on an even keel, but uh, they just didn't have that quality to ram home the advantage that they'd won for themselves with their approach to the game. Cinebic did very well to weather that storm, that physical storm, and then as we said, they popped up on that corner, perhaps not defended very uh, very well by the Marconi team, and they've really paid a high price. Well, up until the 20-minute mark, you probably have to give all the points to Marconi. This was Brownlee's chance in the 13th minute of the game, which just shows you uh, well, where Archie Thompson took his chances, ran at the defence, and Brownlee, well, swivel and turn, but really they're struggling to hit the target as well at that stage. They certainly are. Archie Thompson, who's a key figure in this Marconi team, has had a wonderful season up until recent weeks still looks out of sorts for mine he really needs something to bounce for him to click him into gear and get the confidence mm. going so much will flow through the team then if Archie's playing well but it's just not happening for Archie and Royce Brownlee I think a, a lot of um, Marconi possession has found its way to his area and he hasn't been able to hold on to the ball or indeed do the damage that he's capable of doing and I think that's where Marconi's approach has fallen down Paul I think you know that they've, they've acquitted themselves really well but just at the cutting edge, it's fallen, fallen apart and they haven't been able to ram home any advantage. Well, he had another chance just inside the six-yard box, a header. He got half a yard on his defender and then just couldn't quite swivel the head enough and put that one over the bar. How would you help Archie Thompson in a situation like this? I know he's not getting enough of the ball, quality ball, but what would you be saying to him at halftime to try and bring him into the game? I'd be leaving him alone. Actually, a couple of words of encouragement, but, but it's, it's important that the team realises what a gem they've got 
and if they can get the ball to him as often as they can, Archie will, will play himself into form. And and, uh, and when you're struggling a bit, and we've all been there as footballers, the most the best tonic for it is just to keep grinding away, and the form will come. You need a couple of uh, lucky bounces to go your way. You need your teammates certainly to play well as well, and Archie can rise another couple of levels. But he's got a lot of mates who are, who are trying really hard, but they need a bit of a bit of form too, and a little bit of confidence as well. Well, a man who's not lacking confidence is Pablo Cardozo. Goal number nine in eight games for Sydney Olympic in his last eight games and he just happened to be Johnny on the spot. That's the deadly area, Andy. Well, it was two minutes into the game last week which set up yeah. Sydney Olympic and, and for different circumstances. Though. We've got Pablo Cardozo who scored so many goals recently and he's one of the, the real top strikers in the competition, has managed to get himself free a yard out from goal and it's really unforgivable when, mm. unforgivable when there's so much at stake. What about two minutes later, Marisic, a little bit offside here uh, but it was close again, the, this is where Sydney Olympic really started to dominate, come into the game a little bit more? Certainly, from about 25 minutes on, Sydney Olympic on the break started looking like they were going through training routines when, you, when you're, you're building up and crossing and finishing and they're looking quite ominous, they've certainly muscled their way back into the game, they've got the quality to really nullify Marconi, the way, their state of mind at the moment. Of course, it's up to the Sydney Olympic players to rise to that level that they can all have and all find and do just that. Well, Marconi fans, please don't give up. You saw what happened in the FA Cup. I'm not going to say it's going to happen here, but that's football. We'll be back right after this. Monday night at 7, live and exclusive. All you need to know from the people in the know in AFL. We showcase and dissect the game week by week. Profiling, interviewing the superstars. With news and views from the coaches and the legendary icons of the game. Tim Watson heads the team of Al, Silvani and Connolly in football feedback. Monday night at 7.30 on C7 Sport. To celebrate the arrival of brand new channels to the Optus TV lineup, we're giving you the chance to win a holiday in beautiful tropical North Queensland. A holiday experience that will simply take your breath away. A holiday in beautiful tropical North Queensland where rainforest meets the reef. To be in with a chance, see contest entry details on the front of this month's Optus magazine. Come and spend some time inside. Television's nastiest app just got a whole lot more hardcore. Hard times for bad men. For the most heart-pounding time on Australian television, on Series 4 explodes on your screen. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Oz Series 4, Monday night, 9.30 on O. Ah, there's that ad again. What ad? You know, the one with the dog on the bottle? It's not a dog. It's a Tasmanian tiger. Huh? There's none left, you know. What, they sold out? No, no more Tasmanian tigers. They're extinct. Although a lot of people reckon they're still out there in the Tasmanian wilderness. <sighs> well, this one's definitely extinct. Cascade Premium Light. It's the best light beer you'll ever touch. Welcome back to Marconi Stadium, Sydney Olympic in the box seat in the return leg of the elimination final. Marconi Stallions now have to score three times without reply in the second half just to force the game into extra time. Eddie Krenchevich, the Stallions coach, has gambled with a three-man attack in his attempt to retrieve that two-goal deficit from the first leg. And although Marconi did have their territory and possession in the opening 45 minutes, once again, their failing in front of goal has cost them dearly. Branko Cellina will be delighted at Sydney Olympic with just a couple of chances really at goal. They converted one of them. And as usual, and as has been the case for most of the last couple of months, it's Pablo Cardozo who has delivered the goods. Now with 13 goals in his last 14 starts. And Pablo Cardozo very much the nemesis for this Marconi side at the moment. Eddie Krenchevich with what may have been his last half-time address of the season, unless the Stallions can somehow perform a miracle 
and a miracle it will be against a Sydney Olympic side which has grown in confidence as the season has progressed. Olympic forced to make one change that came towards the end of the first half when Greg Owens succumbed to injury and the birthday boy Peter Zorbis came on as his replacement. Marconi made seven changes going into the game and perhaps Eddie Crenshaw is feeling that he needs to give that reshuffled lineup a bit more time. Well, I'm sure it's a buoyant Sydney Olympic camp at the moment. Down on the sideline with Andy Harper, we have the injured Sydney Olympic player, Lindsay Wilson. Thanks a lot, Mark. Well, Lindsay, Mark came out of the blocks with uh, a lot of fire and a lot of bluster, not to be unexpected, really. No, uh, they were always going to come at us hard and it was always a case of uh, just keeping together and not conceding in those first 20 minutes. Very important. You would have been impressed then with the way the boys consolidated the nil-all uh, score like they'd managed to achieve and then ram home an advantage. Yeah, it was always um, how we were going to approach the game. We knew that the first 20 minutes we were going to be under the cosh and everyone just had to stick with their player and then once we didn't concede after those first 20 minutes it opened up a bit and we snuck a goal. And it did start, start to open up. There started to be a little bit more fluency from the Olympic team. You would expect them to go on with it from here. Yeah, I think as uh, Marconi get a bit more frustrated and start throwing people forward, the likes of Kresh and Pabs will get more ball and um, the boys will get in behind. I wouldn't be surprised if we scored again. All right, Lindsay, we will uh, wish you all the best and, and uh, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, cheers. Yes, Lindsay Wilson out through injury for the rest of the season. That was a big blow for Sydney Olympic and Wilson on a personal level of course he would have fancied his chances perhaps of going away to Korea with the Socceroos for the Confederations Cup that is not an option now Wilson succumbed to an ankle injury picked up ironically while playing for Australia in Coffs Harbour recently and the indications are he will not recover in time for that trip to the Confederations Cup. Frank Farina, as we've already said, due to name his 23-man squad tomorrow. Archie Thompson playing in a Marconi shirt tonight from Bolton in goals for Olympic. Two of the players who may be hoping to get the nod from the national coach. There's a corner here for Marconi. Need to score pretty quickly if they are to have a hope in this game as we said they need to score three times without reply in the second half just to force the game into extra time if that being the case of course it will be the goal for goals and if it's all tied up after that it's down to the dreaded penalty shootout that is a long long way off at the moment Renault whips it into the near post. Thompson wins it again in the air, again in front of Kohler. And once again, though, he can't keep the header down. The warning signs, though, for Sydney Olympic. Well, a huge task in front of Marconi in this second half. And perhaps to assess just what a big task it is. Down on the side, Andy Harper, we have the Marconi striker, Norman Tomei. Thanks a lot, uh, Michael. Normally, great start by the boys, but just lacked a bit of punch in the final third to... to consolidate the good work that they've done yeah we um we came out firing i mean we have to at least score two goals now a little bit different but um yeah at first we started really well we pressuring our front but um just just can put away from here on then olympic of course got that goal that that has really been a, a body blow for your team can you see your boys getting away with it from here ah uh, it's going to be very difficult olympics playing really really well um i mean we've got to score three to draw four to win so um it's going to be hard i think if we score first, put a bit of pressure on them, then hopefully we can do it, but uh, it's going to be very difficult. How's, how's the mood been at training this week? A, a self-belief in the players that they can get out of the hole that was dug last Sunday? Um, yeah, I think well, we're positive. I mean, we didn't, we didn't do that well last week, but we're positive about coming out and hopefully winning. Um, we pushed a lot of players up forward, so we're confident, but at the moment, we'll see. Very quickly, Norm, who's the man who's going to dig you out of the poo? Um, at the moment, well, you've got to look at Archie Thompson, hopefully scoring, scoring at least three, four. Good on you, Normie. Thanks. Go and enjoy the rest of the game, and, and congratulations on your seat. Thank you. Almost five minutes into the second half, no change to the scoreline. 
Tony to get a hurry on if they are to retrieve what looks to be an impossible situation. Talbot to Urich, handball there by Archie Thompson, spotted by the referee. Interesting move in the middle of the park as well. Angelo Costanzo coming inside. John Gibson going outside. And, uh, Angelo Costanzo being able to uh, manoeuvre the ball as he was in the first half. Probably not a bad move. Eddie Krenchevich's part. The ball over the top has got to be first time, first class. Longo wins the header in front of Marisic. Kim cleans up at the back. Brendan Renner looking for the head of Costanzo. Bailey was in there first and fell awkwardly. Tough customer though, Scott Bailey. I'm sure he'll be okay. Holding the... I think he fell awkwardly on Angelo Costanzo's elbow. Radulovic. Zoric. Brownlee takes the hit from Bailey and gets the free kick. Here's Reno, now Costanzo. Can't find a way through, Gatsoulis was blocking his progress. So we go to Olympic, Costanzo happy with the decision he's already been booked he needs to be careful Angelo Costanzo <laughs> Packer tries to run it down Bell gets there first he goes back towards his goalkeeper Michael Turnbull Bailey with the clearance, up the line, it's going to stay in, Packer, tries to pick out Marisic in the middle, Kim was well positioned, away comes Brendan Reno. Orgerinos, Juric. Longo pressured by Marisic, goes back to Turnbull. The goalkeeper makes a mess of the clearance. Bell is under pressure, wants to play his way out of it. Well, a little bit fortunate there, Marconi. The pressure from both Marisic and Cardozo. with the clearance, might only have a throw. I just wonder what the Olympic game plan will be in the second half, Paul Way. We'll see Marisic and Cardozo now up front. Just trying to pressure, guess the Marconi back line. Just make sure they're uh, offering a target, if you like, for their own defenders, and perhaps uh, Olympic may be a little bit more defensive in midfield they don't need to chase the game do they not at all no i think that the likes of troy helping good Sulis. thompson well three times now archie thompson has got the better of his marker in the air and three times he has just missed the target not the tallest of players archie thompson but he has a great leap we saw it again on that occasion. Good thing about Archie Thompson is he's been marked by a player just the same size as him and that with Paul Kohler. With Archie springing his step, I think uh, Archie's always going to win those battles. So I don't know whether it's the right idea to pump the ball into the 18-yard box for uh, Archie Thompson and Brownlee, but if it's getting close to his target, why not? Thank <laughs> you. 
Zorich trying to thread it through to Brendan Reno and Andy Pack. Putting that one high into the grandstand. There was some doubt about Andy Packer going into the game. He finished the worst off in a pretty heavy collision with David Aseski in the first leg last week. But he has recovered in time. Important for Olympic that he did so without Lindsay Wilson, of course. On his right hand side, they need a good replacement. Packer's just that. Gutierrez still contesting the decision. He gets a card. And Jerry Connolly, third of the game. Mike, I think that will be the tactic. Just make sure when we lose possession, you get all the bodies behind the ball, Sydney Olympic. Even the likes of Troy Halpern, Gutsoulis, Marasic maybe can stay up there with Pablo Cardozo and work hard to keep the back four of, or back three of Marconi honest. But generally, don't concede a goal. If you have to kick it into the top row of the stand, then do so, as we just saw on that last occasion when Macker rammed it into the roof of the uh, stand on the near side. Long go. Bell. There's <laughs> Bailey. Thompson. Curry covers well. Jorinos. Almost able to keep that one in play. Gibson has got past Kohler. Puts it in low and hard. Radulovic sets it up for Vlado Zoric. But it was the wrong side of the body there for Vlado Zoric. He took it with his left foot, as you would expect. Unable to hit the target. Zorich doing well to open up the opportunity, but Plato Zoric hitting the shot with the outside of the left boot. Marisic oh, was trying to chip it down the line, pack up. Stands up. Brownlee turns away from Bailey. Zorich to the feet of Radulovic with the back heel looking for Royce Brownlee. Well, they should have an understanding, Radulovic and Brownlee. As we saw on that occasion, Packer. First of the ball, Simon Bell was in late, and Simon Bell is already booked. And Simon Bell is going to go off. A second yellow card, a red one follows and Marconi down to 10 men a disaster for the Stallions Simon Bell across the body of Packer who was going to escape down the line and what was a huge job in front of Marconi just keeps getting bigger very very hard now to see how Marconi can get out of this one, Paul White. Well, uh, maybe the word impossible comes to mind. I've, uh, I've seen three goals scored in less than 45 minutes before. We all have, but with 10 men and Sydney Olympics staring down the barrel of a minor semi-final in the National Soccer League and the hunger on the other side. From that man, Angelo Costanzo, who's loving his position in the middle of the park then I, I still use the word impossible. Well, it's now about pride for Marconi as George Gutzillas puts it into the stand in no uncertain manner. And Andy Harper a disaster really for Marconi. 
They had a very difficult job confronting them tonight, Mike. They started with all the intent that was required to turn it around. They, as we've talked about, they've just struggled at the cutting edge and then uh, it's gone from bad to worse. The goal they've conceded now. With the game that's gone pretty flat, which suits Olympic, certainly in the context of this, of this uh, semi-final tie, to losing Simon Bell, you would have to think it's almost insurmountable, the task now. Sorbus. Goes down by Radulovic. Back up. Reno recovers well. Back at his stayed down. That's a Juric. Going forward for the first time in the game. Adozo. Morisic. Still a chance for Morisic. And he buries it. Krasimir Morisic from an acute angle. Extends the lead for Sydney Olympic. They have to be on their way to the minor semi-final now. And Krasimir Morisic applauds the unselfish contribution of Pablo Cardozo. And it looked to be a tough job initially, but he got the bounce of the ball, and that, you would imagine, is the ball game for Marconi. Well, Asesky tried his hardest to convince the referee that he caught this on the chest. Let's have a look. No, nowhere near the chest. And that was a great finish in between the goalkeeper's legs. But what about Pablo Cardozo? He set it up with his final ball, but it was his control in the middle of the puck, and he was balanced, and he just set up Ante Juric running out wide. He didn't panic, he didn't have to. It just shows the class of the man. President Marisic on target last week from the dead ball. Scores from open play tonight. There's now a festival atmosphere among the large contingent of Sydney Olympic fans who have made their way to Bosley Park. And no wonder. They're in the driving seat, Olympic. Leading this game two goals to nil, leading five goals to one on aggregate. Of course, Marconi down to ten men. Following the red card to Simon Bell. The issue here in one way, Andy Harper, is what do you do if you're a Marconi player? Well, you keep battling away and you keep playing football and, and you keep enjoying your football and trying to, to get the goals that you believe you deserve. John Gibson now making way for Christian Kerr, but you think Sydney Olympic can have a say on who's going to win this time. Just look at that last move and look at the names involved. Halton to Urich to Cardozo to Marisic to the back of the net. It's going to be hard to contain. Sydney Olympic finishing fourth in the regular seat. people believe they were a better side than that. It didn't go according to plan over the last few rounds, but they have stepped up a gear in the final series. Last season, of course, they made it through to the minor semi-final, beaten on that occasion by Carlton with a goal in extra time. That memory, I would imagine, is driving them on as they look forward to next week's battle with the Melbourne Knights. You don't like to be premature, you don't like to be presumptuous, but Marconi do look dead and buried here. Packer, pass two. We had Marisic free on the left-hand side. Christian Kerr, the substitute on for Marconi. Costanzo has now gone back to central defence for the Stallions as they look to minimise the damage. But a few heads have dropped, haven't they? Yeah, you can see it in the body language, can't you? There's a few still out there enjoying themselves. But uh, as a rule, Generally, they seem to have dropped their heads. Let's see how much pressure they put on the ball. How quickly. Brendan Renault is one of them that won't give up. Still 25 minutes remaining for Sydney Olympic. 
They want to go for goals. The opportunity is there. Help it. And Audrinos flung himself at the ball. Got there in front of Andrew Costanzo. Couldn't direct the header towards the goal. There is a real danger now that Marconi will be opened up in a big, big way by Sydney Olympic. Janowski has come on for Marconi. Place of Radulovic. Well, Andy Harper has the Olympic make a change, and it's going to be a chance for Damon Kalina. Marconi also, Mike. John Mazzano coming on for Royce Brownley. And it's going to be an early mark for George Gutsoulis. Oh, Kalina taking his time to get onto the park. Perhaps there's a problem with his equipment or something. A change delayed for a moment or two for Sydney Olympic. But I was going to say, Andy Harper, Marconi, in some people's eyes, have overachieved in making the top six this season. But having done that, we've got to this point, we've got to this situation which we're seeing right now. There is a pride factor and they do have players out there with experience like Trajanovsky, Zorich, Renault, Longo, Costanzo. Pretty accomplished NSL players who need to assess this situation now and you would hope try and minimise the damage. They don't want to go out of the finals on the end of an embarrassing scoreline. No, that's, that's a, a very accurately made point, Mike, and I think... Uh, it's Mazzano, the substitute. I think the form that they've shown through the season, which has led people to the, their assessment, Marconi might have been fortunate to make the six, has been brought to bear in these two games. Sydney Olympic just too good. In the first 25 minutes or so of the first half, they were under a bit of pressure, but they weathered that nicely. And of course, Simon Bell's been sent off. They have two goals to the good Olympic and looking better team. Here it goes from Reno. Better away by Packer. Only as far as Kim. Thompson. Thompson. Driven into the ground by Troy Halpin. And look at the white shirt streaming forward. Packer with acres of room on the right hand side Juric makes the run through the middle he is the target Costanzo gets there first and it's a long way back now for Ante Juric the cover is there from Troy Halpin Trajanovski Kim Kerr Just about sums up Marconi's season. Well, when that broke down and you said that Ante Juric is a long way back for him, there were six players in defensive mode ready to take on any blue shirt that came forward. So I think that's something that will uh, please Branko Kalina as well there. They've got this one sewn up and yet they're still disciplined enough to keep their shape and keep their form that they are not going to get all get charged forward and get caught on the break even if they don't lose the game. Maizano, Thompson. Well, it's been a hard day at the office for Archie Thompson. So much expected of him, so much of a burden on his shoulders going into this game, returning from a two-game suspension. But so far, he's drawn a blank. Credit must be given to his marker, Paul Kohler. Zorich. Looking for Trajanowski. And Bailey has missed it. Trajanowski's on to it. Well, he had to go for goal there, Chris Trajanowski, but it was always a very difficult angle. Well, that's Marconi's first shot on goal. First shot on target. So, what is that? 70 minutes and you get your first shot on target. That's not good enough. Marisic. 
20 minutes remaining in the return leg of the elimination semi-final and Sydney Olympic comfortably in front ready to take on the Melbourne Knights in the sudden death minor semi-final next weekend that game will be played in Sydney most likely at the Parramatta Stadium, but the kickoff time and the match day yet to be confirmed by Soccer Australia. We can tell you one thing, it will be shown on C7. As indeed of all the finals games, and as indeed will be the Confederations Cup tournament coming up in Korea. Trejanovski. Trejanovski. Had to do it all himself, Chris Trajanovski. He sliced the shot in the end. Should have found the target there, Trajanovski, at least forcing a save from the goalkeeper. He's off balance though as he struck the ball. And Clint Bolton left with nothing to do. Trajanovski again gets past Bailey Andy Packer does well to prevent the corner he was maybe fallen awkwardly there Andy Packer see him man just looking down at the right ankle I think it is maybe he just turned his ankle Renault is it Thompson dives in, Bolton recovers well. Brave goalkeeping there from Clint Bolton, who hasn't had too much to do this evening, but what he's had to do, he's done well. On this occasion, do denying his soccer teammate, Archie Thompson. Well, I used to talk about the pitch here at Marconi as the best in the competition. It was during your time here, uh, Andy Harper, but looking at the six yard box at the moment we just saw there with that save by Clint Bolton very difficult for goalkeepers isn't it it is, I, I think the pitch has been troubled for a number of seasons now and the club hasn't quite been able to get it back to the pristine condition that it once was it was uh, certainly the showpiece of the game in this country and it's just not quite at the moment but I'm sure the club will address that situation Roger Reynolds I don't know if you can give us an insight, Andy Harper, to why this thing involving Damon Kalina is taking an eternity. We did have the numbers up there. Good five minutes or so ago. Apparently for the change to be made. Apparently he's got the wrong shirt. And I don't know whether you can confirm that, Andy. Well, I'm very privileged to have the highly esteemed Matthew Breeze right next to me, the fourth official, <laughs> sometimes referee, and he's scratching his head as well. It's something to do with the training shirt, and, and uh, there's a few Olympic officials running around trying to fix it. Adds a bit of colour to the occasion. Renault whips it in. Bolton gets both hands to the ball. Bailey clears the line only as far as Costanzo. Now with Maizano. He tried to pick out Renault. He dived in took his opponent out of the play Orgerinos taking no chances it's Peter Zorbis who was on the receiving end for that challenge Kim here goes Ante Juric good solace in front of him now with Andy Packer Wide left is Marisic. Four against four at the moment. Marisic goes deep. Offside is Gutsoulos. Well, that is a pretty basic error from George Gutsoulos. Just had to look across the line, really. Maybe Sydney Olympic have given up on Damon Kalina because it now looks as though it'll be Nick Carl. Come on. Sano. 
Well, whatever the problem is, Paul Wade, you'd be pretty unhappy if you're Damon Cleaner, wouldn't you? Semi-final, your team's in front. You'd be gagging, basically, to get out there and get a taste of it. Well, the... One of the officials at Sydney Olympic is running around with a piece of paper. He's crossed names off, so maybe the number that he's got on his shirt doesn't correspond with the number that is on the piece of paper. And Branko Kalina is not a patient man. He said, sit down, Damon. I'll get somebody else to do that. So Nick Carl on for George Gutsoulis. Who shook the hand of Jerry Connolly as he made his way to the sideline. Good idea this. Gutsy's on. One yellow card. He doesn't need another one. A silly one towards the end of the game. A rash challenge. Get him off now before. And then he can play the next game. A sight for sore eyes for some Olympic fans. Nick Carl has been out of the equation for quite a few weeks now with injury. It really was the key for Olympic over the first half of the season. It was Carl and Owens who led the front line. And here is Cardozo. To keep the ball in play for Jorinos. Whips it in, cleared by Brendan Reno, Longo. And Longo caught on his way through. Yes, Nicky Carl and Greg Owens, the makeshift forward line for Olympic in the first half of the season before the return of Pablo Cardozo. Now Carl, two players unmarked at the back post, but he can't pick them out, Nick Carl. Olympic, though, do have a free kick as consolation. Kresimir Marasic scored a wonderful goal from free kick last week at Belmore. He was looking for a second there, but ball charged down by Christian Kerr. Maizano played down the throat of Ante Juric. Harper. Let's talk of Troy Halpin's contribution tonight. He was the star last week. He was fired up. He really pulled the strings for Sydney Olympic when he needed to in a big way. Tonight his contribution has been a lot more subdued, but in a way he's done what he had to do and he's been happy to, uh, I guess, play a subordinate role and let other players take the limelight. But he started it doesn't diminish his contribution though, does it? No, not at all, but he's coming to the game in a more familiar respect, certainly, as, as the game has gone on. And he's a match winner, Troy Halton. If Olympic are going to figure from here on in, he'll have a big say in that. Well, especially if you consider that Lapsansky and Marth won't be playing next week. So, if that's... If they don't replace those two players with quality, then Troy Halping could just be another man of the match performance. Dominic Longo, even with just on 10 minutes to go and the cause lost. He's not going to fall out of a tackle. Never has, never will. Nor should he, but the fuse is ticking. Kim Pen Kyun. 
showing his luck as a striker at the moment for Marconi. The former Korean international who played in two World Cups, Italian 90 and USA 94 for South Korea. Coming to the end of a decorated playing career, Kim Tan Kyun. Perhaps this is his last game at this level. Trajanovsky. And again, Thompson above his man, this time denied by an outstanding reflex save from Clint Bolton. It hasn't been his night, has it, Archie Thompson? He's had only a few opportunities that will come in the air. Surprisingly enough, he really has had no change at all from Paul Kohler on the ground, Paul Wade, but in the air, he's beaten them all hands he's, down. He's done a very good job, hasn't he? That was straight out of the textbook. <laughs> Heading the ball down, expect a, maybe a bad bump in that horrible area just in front of the goalkeeper, but it didn't happen either. Well, as we speak, Kohler wins this header over the top of Thompson. Yeah. Reno. Urich was there. Reno does well to get into the middle. Archie Thompson. Finding Scott Bailey, a much tougher opponent in the air on that occasion. He's still feeling the effects. Archie Thompson. Long go. Corbis has picked out Packer, who's heading towards the byline. Marconi slow to get across in cover. Carl to check his run to stay on side. Costanzo, though, not to be beaten easily. Angelo Costanzo gets the free kick into the bargain. Well, there was a chance for advantage to be played there by Jerry Connolly as Andy Packer went away with the ball. Frustration getting the better of Brendan Renner on a big way on that occasion. And now that change we think is going to be made. Finally, Damon Kalina will come off the bench and the player he replaces is Troy Halpin. Damon Kalina, one of the most versatile players in the business. He's played across all three lines, defence, midfield and attack for Olympic this season. from Cut Mark. Cuts it back. Nick Carl. What an opportunity there for Nick Carl on his favourite left foot. Close to goal. He'll be very disappointed there. But he couldn't find the target. Plenty of goal to aim at as well for Nick Carl. Still Olympic two, Marconi nil. Goal in the first half from Pablo Cardozo. And a goal in the second from Krizimir Marasic. Just over five minutes remaining. Zoric. Important tackle from Zorbis. Yeah, goal kick. Well, thankfully, in a way, Andy Harper, it's not going to be an embarrassing scoreline for Marconi. Threatened to be so just after the dismissal of Simon Bell, but given their performance tonight, Marconi would have been tough justice really if they'd been on the receiving end of a hiding. Yeah, certainly on the basis of their first half hour, Mike. But 5 1, 
on aggregate at this stage. Branko would be very happy with that scoreline, the aggregate scoreline, but I think I think he'd be a little bit annoyed that his side hasn't really carved Marconi up in these last 15 minutes. They've looked quite dangerous on the break, but the last pass has come to nothing. I suppose culminating in that last chance that just went begging to Nick Carl. And you don't want to get greedy, I know, but coaches would love their teams, really, when they have the ascendancy to really put the opposition away. Olympic tonight haven't done it. Credit to Marconi, the first half hour, 35 minutes, they really put put the game up. And the, and the semi-final tie up to Olympic. Couldn't go on with it, and, and circumstances since then have certainly contrived to go against them. Well, the grandstands starting to empty in a big way here at Bosley Park. Four minutes remaining, but the Olympic fans way out of the ground happy to enjoy what they've seen so far looking forward to next weekend's minor semi-final against the Melbourne Knights and perhaps Olympic feel after a decade without reward that maybe championship is not beyond the realms of possibility and only just won the one championship in their history Sydney Olympic and the National League championship in 1990 a club with such a high profile trophies have been very hard to come by there's a long way to go yet of course but Andy Harper, they don't suffer too much in comparison to the, the two favourites, Wollongong and South Melbourne, do they, Sydney Olympic? Certainly hold their own, and but for the point in at the end of the regular season, uh, they certainly would have been knocking on the door for the top two, and that really would have given them a good run in this top six. But they have the quality to go all the way, there's no doubt about that. If the suspension and injury situation is kind to them, Mike, they're going to make it very difficult, life very difficult for their next couple of opponents. All focus, though, next week on the Melbourne Knights. Branko's mind already, I would the assuming is starting to think about that particular contest this one this one is in the bag a good job done by olympic money earned task completed next one is melbourne knights yes and the knights without both steve horbart and lubo lapshansky through suspension daniel vasilevsky as well is going to be missing because of international duty with the young buckaroos so it's a weakened melbourne Knights side which will come to sydney next weekend so Steve Hoyt, there I mean Andrew Marth of course out through suspension as Marconi get a chance to maybe grab a consolation from the corner and it comes Reno. Looking for Trajanovsky, a strong header from Bailey. Zorich, Kerr. Kim. Well, the Olympic fans making most of the noise here at Marconi Stadium. Just over 5,000 for the first leg last week at Belmont tonight. Here at Bosley Park. The official crowd figure is a little bit better. 6,087. That's not the sort of crowd this local derby would usually attract. Particularly given the semi-final status of this game, that's got to be a little disappointing. I know 3-1, certainly from last week, perhaps made the game all over as far as a lot of fans were concerned. But this game used to bring five-figure uh, crowds in through the gate. Just during the regular season as well, Andy. Absolutely. This was a hotly contested derby match in the years gone by. Missed there completely by Zorbis and missed in fact by everyone, including three Marconi players on the edge of the six yard box. Here's Nick Hull. We're about to go into time added on. Kalina and Damon Kalina wants to do it on his own. Still going, Kalina. Now with Carl. They're trying to walk it into the net. Cardozo. As we go into stoppage time, it's going to be a corner rather than a goal. They perhaps wanted to be a bit too clever, Sydney Olympic. 
Well, I think that move broke down on halfway. Kalina had about half an hour to put Pablo Cardozo away, decided not to, and it was going to be very difficult from then on because Marconi got players back. And Pablo Cardozo, I can assure you, is one very happy camper at the moment because of that. Carl. Another corner to Marconi. So, Carl, going to make it three corners in a row. Can't do this. Here's Longo. Zajanovsky with a layup. It's fallen short. Zorba's in. Marisic with the bounce. Now with Cardozo. And Damon Kalina. Well... He just had Dretz there to get any sort of contact on the ball. It's stuck under his studs just as he was lining it up. And now it's with Marconi at the other end. Maizano. Thompson can't run it down. Almost two minutes of time added on by Jerry Connolly. goes back to his goalkeeper, Michael Turnbull. Here yeah, with the dummy. Maizano. And a decent shot as well from Maizano. It dipped at the last moment. Clint Bolton had to be on his toes to make the save. <laughs> Renault wins the header above Peter Zorbis. So it's going to be a happy 22nd birthday celebration for Peter Zorbis tonight. Franco Cellina. Be satisfied with a job well done by Sydney Olympic. Might have liked a few more goals, but in the circumstances, it's been a rather comfortable victory for Sydney Olympic. <laughs> Eddie Krenchevich, well, all about planning for next season from now. This season is about to end. Well, Sydney Olympic live to fight another day, but it's the end of the road for Marconi Stallions. Olympic comfortable victors, 2-0 on the night, 5-1 on aggregate. They go to the minor semi-final next weekend at home against the Melbourne Knights. And the task to win the championship for the first time in a decade, very much on the cards for Sydney Olympic. Dominant over two legs against their local rivals Marconi. Full of confidence going into next week. Marconi, of course, disadvantaged after the dismissal of Simon Bell early in the second half. But they can have no complaints. They produced a strong opening 30 minutes, Marconi, but in the end, they weren't quite good enough, particularly in front of goal. That has been their story of the season for Marconi. But it's a good story here for Sydney Olympic. The final score in the second leg of the elimination final. Sydney Olympic 2, Marconi Stallions nil. So the Olympic players come across to salute the large contingent of visiting fans, a noisy contingent as well. And they'll be back in a week's time for the minor semi-final. The season is over for Marconi. They did well to make the semis in the eyes of their coach, Eddie Krenčević. He will be honest enough to suggest, perhaps, that they weren't good enough to go any further. But Sydney Olympic are good enough, and they have their sights set on the title. Let's go down to the sideline with Paul Way. Thanks very much, Mike Cockrell. Well, I have one of the leaders of this Sydney Olympic outfit that has taken the next step in the finals. 
and he joins us on the sideline, Scotty Bailey. Scotty, you seem to be enjoying yourself out Once you got that goal, seem to relax a little bit. Yeah, well, we knew that uh, Marconi would come out and attack us. They had to. Uh, we just played our normal game, mainly defensive early on. Once we got the ball, we spread it, and then we... Uh, that's where we created chances. Were you made to play defensive? Because they really did come at you. They played three up front. It was a nervous time for 20 minutes. Oh, yeah, yeah, always. But we, ex we expected Marconi they had to score. So uh, if we could hold them out and then uh, create some chances and uh, jag one, we would uh, obviously go through. Melbourne Knights next week. Good luck. Thanks very much. Thanks, Scotty Bailey. Well, uh, on my right-hand side, I have Archie Thompson. Archie, this might be the last time we see you in this country. Yeah, I mean, hopefully things work out after the season. But, you know, tonight it was pretty disappointing. Having a man sent off and knowing that we'll, we need to win 2-0 didn't help very much. So very disappointed, but you know, the lads tried hard even with 10 men. And you know, maybe, hopefully next year I'll be overseas, but if not, we'll have a good season with Mark Hone. Well, I mean, really, the boys realised their potential, didn't they? I mean, Eddie was saying, look, if we make the top six, we'll be happy. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, yeah, we knew if we made that top six, anything's possible. You know? And um, but tonight I think we're beaten by a better side. and. You know, I think they'll go far in the finals. I was just disappointed that we couldn't make it, but, you know, there's always next year. Good on you, Archie. Thanks for your time and good luck overseas. Archie Thompson, we wish him all the very best, Andy Harper, because uh, maybe not his night tonight or the last couple of weeks, but we certainly know he's got potential for the overseas market. Oh, Archie will be right. got plenty of talent, and uh, you're going to have those troughs in your, in your form throughout your career, but he's very young. He's got more talent than a lot of people would ever dream of, and I'm sure he'll be right from here. Injury-free, Archie Thompson will have a great career. What about Archie Thompson's goal as we have a little look at that? Uh, they started to uh, put, turn the thumb screws a little bit, didn't they, uh, Sydney Olympic? Well, they're a better side at the moment, and uh, they did their business very well tonight. They weathered the early storm. They, uh, they executed what they needed to execute. Beautiful work there, instinctive work from Cardozo. Great finish, although the Marconi players claiming handball there. But Marasic as well, I'm going to sign for the rest of the competition. Their free kick last week, and his general performance tonight, I think, reflects the fact that he's starting to look like the Crescent of Maris Hitch of old. Put that together with the form, the goal scoring form of Cardozo, the eminence of Troy Halpin, the leadership of Bailey and Urich at the back. You've got a pretty nice cocktail with Sydney Olympic and Melbourne Knights have got a very difficult job next week. And they'll have their feet on the ground. Tough game against the Melbourne Knights next week. Certainly, and I think it's, it'll get down to, a, again, a battle of, between the quality and the depth of the two squads. The Melbourne Knights will be a couple of key players. To lose Andrew Marth and, and uh, Lubo Lipsansky.